As we feed our body with its daily nourishment, let us not forget that more importantly, we must feed our souls with the Word of God, the food for our souls. Be a part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. Subscribe, like, share, and tap the notification bell in order to be updated every time we have a new reflection for you. Come, let us partake of the food for our souls. My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the fourth Sunday of Easter. I invite you to join me in reading, reflecting, and praying over the gospel this Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. This also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, our Gospel this Sunday is taken from the Gospel of St. John. We are in chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. And of course, in our Gospel this Sunday, Jesus introduces himself as the Good Shepherd. That's why the fourth Sunday of Easter is always considered as the Good Shepherd Sunday. And you know, when Jesus in our Gospel compares himself to a shepherd, I ask myself, why shepherd? And of course, I believe that for most of us, we don't really have an encounter with a real shepherd. I never encountered a real shepherd. That's why sometimes I remember when I was still younger, it makes me difficult to relate to the story because I never encountered a real shepherd. I was telling myself, perhaps it would be easier for me to relate with the story, to understand the story, if Jesus could have said, I am the good carpenter. I am a good farmer because these preoccupations are something that is common among us. But no, in the Gospel of St. John, Jesus says, I am a good shepherd. And so why shepherd? Well, first of all, of course, my dear brothers and sisters, is the context of the story is Palestine. We all know that the most common preoccupation in Palestine during the time of Jesus is be being a shepherd. Because Palestine is not really a good place for farming, but it is good for taking care of animals, especially sheep and goats. That's why, as I said, the most, pre most common preoccupation in Palestine during the time of Jesus is being a shepherd. That is why Jesus, knowing that this context is Palestine and that's the context of the people, of his audience, he used the image of being a shepherd. But not only that, more important than being a shepherd to be a common experience among them, we all know that if we look at the real relationship between a shepherd and a sheep, it really mirrors to us and shows us the crucial and vital relationship we have with Christ. Because if we look at the relationship of a shepherd with the sheep, we will realize that their relationship is something that is very vital. As I was telling you a while ago, it's a little difficult, especially for me, I speak for my own, a little difficult to relate with the story because I never encountered a real shepherd. But it reminds me of an experience before I was assigned in this particular island in my province that is known to be a very good gra grazing area. 
That's why the island is known for before for a very large ranch during that time. And I remember when I was assigned there, I, it always amuses me, it amazes me, that at around 6.30 or 7 in the morning, when you go that area, you pass by the road in the ranch, you will notice that there will always be a man riding a horse, and you will notice that he will be followed by a long single line of cows, mind you, single line. And the cows will be very behaved following the man. And so every time that I see that, it always amazes me. And then ask myself, how does this man train the cows to behave that way? That they are well behaved in a single line following him. And so one time I had an opportunity to have a conversation with one of those men who are in charge of the cows. And I asked the man, sir, I'm always amazed of how you train the cows. Why is it that in the morning when I see you riding your horse, the cows will be falling in a single line and will be well-behaved following you. How did you train them that way? And the man surprisingly told me, Oh, Father, we did not really train them that way. It just came naturally. It comes naturally. And I said, what do you mean? Well, Father, you know, especially during the dry season, when there's really not much grass, ar grass around, that there's nothing really to eat around, you know, these cows rely on us so much. You know, our life and its dry season, normally before even we wake up, we wake up, we would already hear the noise of the cows as if waking us up. Why? Because they're already hungry. And so we, when we wake up, what will we do? We will open the gate for the cows. I will, read, I will ride my horse. And once I begin, you know, moving, you know, riding my horse, all the cows will just follow me in one single line. Why is that, Father? Because they are hungry and the cows know that I, being their cowboy, if you call that cowboy or cow hand, is the one who knows where the grass is. The cows know that I am the one who knows where the grassy area is. The cows know that I am the one who knows where the grazing will be. That's why everybody will just have to follow me because not following me means to go hungry that day. That's why, Father, oh, it just comes naturally. Once I open the gate, I ride my horse, and I begin riding my horse, everybody will just follow me. And you know, Father, when we reach the grassy area, all the cows will just be scattered eating around. We'll be enjoying the grazing area. And after a period of eating grass and becoming full, what do they do? They all stop and begin to look at me again and will be mooing or making their sound, telling me that they are already full. And this time, what do they need after eating? What do we do? We drink. That's why what do I do when I hear them and when I see them to be looking at me again, I will be riding my horse again and I will lead them to the river and everybody will just follow me because the cows know that I am the one who knows where the water is for them. And so, Father, the whole day, it will be grassy area to the river, grassy area to the river, grassy area to the river, and at the end of the day, when I go back to the house, I bring them to their, of course, place where we keep them by night. They just enter and I close the gate again because the cows know that I am the one who knows where they will be safe for the night. When I heard him say that, I said, whoa, all of a sudden, the story of Jesus saying, I am a good shepherd just made sense to me. And what is that? that the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, in that story that I related to you, that I told you, the relationship between that cow hand and the cows is just very vital. That the life of these animals, of the cows and the sheep, is in the hands of the shepherd. He is the one who knows where the grazing is. He is the one who knows where the water is. He is the one who knows where they will be safe for the night. Does that not remind you of Psalm 23? When I heard that story, all of a sudden, Psalm 23 made sense, complete, complete sense to me. 
Remember Psalm 23? It says, The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Because, of course, if you're following the shepherd, you have your food, you have your drink, you have your safety. That's why in the Psalm 29, The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He brings me to green pastures. Does that remind you of the story again of that man? To living waters, he leads me. When I walked in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for the shepherd is with me. Protection. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus says in our gospel this Sunday, I am the good shepherd. It is only when we follow our shepherd can we have food, can we have drink, can we have security. It is a vital relationship with Christ. Not to follow Christ means to go hungry, to go thirsty, to be unsafe, and even to die in the process. My dear brothers and sisters, indeed the Lord is the good shepherd. For he's the one who leads us into green pastures. He's the one who leads us to living water. That he died for us and rose again on the third day, giving us true life, everlasting life. The source of always our redemption and salvation, our living water. And it is through Christ that we will be saved. And yet the challenge is this. Yes, we have seen in the life of Jesus that indeed he is the good shepherd. The challenge is in our gospel, he says, they will hear my voice. My dear brothers and sisters, are we true sheep of the Lord? Because we hear his voice. And I hope we don't just stop in being sheep of the Lord, that we hear his voice. Secondly, that we are good sheep, that Jesus is not just a good shepherd to us, but we too are the good sheep of the Lord because we hear his voice and obey his voice. Let us pray. God, our loving Father, we continue to thank you for giving us your only begotten Son to be our Savior. And of course, on this fourth Sunday of Easter, to realize him to be our good shepherd, the one who leads us to green pasture and living water that gives us eternal life. As we recognize him to be our good shepherd, may we strive to be good sheep for him, that we listen to his voice, to your voice, and always obey it. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God bless you, and have a blessed Sunday to all of you. Thank you for partaking of the Word of God, the food for our souls, and being part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. May God bless and protect you.